Hello and welcome to another video on basic fiber optics. In a previous video, we discussed solitons, which are these interesting pulses that can arise when you have a fiber with a strong linearity and also negative dispersion, which we call anomalous dispersion. What happens here is that the nonlinearity leads to self-phase modulation in the front of the pulse, which generates a local red chirp in the front and blue chirp in the back. But because of anomalous dispersion, blue light will propagate faster than red light, essentially causing these two chunks of light to switch position, leading to all these interesting oscillations in the middle, or perhaps the pulse that actually retains its shape as it propagates down the length of the fiber. So remember that all of this behavior depends on the sign of the dispersion being negative. But what happens if we make that sign positive? we get some kind of other interesting photonic behavior? Well, let's see what happens. So actually what we get is something called optical wave breaking. And to understand it, we first have to realize that beta 2 being positive means that red light propagates faster than blue light, while the surface radiation we talked about before still causes red light to be generated in the front of the pulse. So now we have a strong generation of red light here that gets pushed forward very quickly by a normal dispersion. So actually we, uh, what we'll end up seeing is like almost an optical shock wave being created where all of the red lights sort of piles up in the front very, very quickly and we get some interesting behavior there when the slope becomes very, very steep. So before we move on to this, I want to recommend this website right here I found with an excellent explanation of optical wave breaking. So please feel free to check that out if uh, you have the time. It's more of an analytical derivation of how, these, uh, how this effect actually occurs. So anyway, let's proceed with the simulation. So we're going to import the usual useful libraries here and all of the split step method functions that I defined in a previous notebook. I just separated those out into a separate file. So a bit easier to work with. Then we're going to define a time base here and a fiber. Now note that this fiber here will have no gamma value in the beginning, so we're basically turning off the nonlinearity. And we do that to see how much broadening we get, sort of inherently, if we only have normal dispersion to thank for it. So let's propagate this down the length of the fiber and check the output. So let's take a look at what we get. All right, so we see that the initial pulse marked in blue is almost identical to the final pulse marked in orange. So by itself, this amount of dispersion doesn't really change the pulse shape very much over this distance. But now let's see what happens if we turn the surface modulation back on by setting gamma to a non-zero value like so. So now we've changed the fiber and we can run the simulation one more time, like so. And we should be able to get a new output here. Okay, so now we definitely get something a lot more interesting. We can see that the pulse is much, much broader this time and has this sort of weird flat behavior on top. And if we check the 2D plot here, we can see a bit more detail what actually happens. Initially, we have a Gaussian pulse propagating forward, but a surface modulation sort of builds up, kicks in. We can see that that red light starts to propagate forward more and more, and we get almost like a square shape of the, the pulse over here. But to see that in a bit more detail, I actually create an animation that demonstrates this effect. So let's take a look at that. So if we zoom in here, we can see that we initially generate red light in the front of the pulse because of surface modulation that begins to propagate faster and faster and faster because of normal dispersion. And in some sense, we actually get a pile up of red light right here, but the slope becomes very, very steep. And then at that point, we get some sort of strange wiggles down here at the the corner of the pulse, and of course something similar happens for the, the back side here where we have blue light. So to understand that in a bit more detail why we get these wiggles here, it's actually helpful to make an analogy to water waves that are crashing on the beach. So if you're on the sort of relatively deep ocean, you'll see that waves are like mostly sort of broad like so, but as you propagate towards the shore, you'll see like a sort of a built up of water until it's like almost like a sort of vertical um, column right here, and at that point the wave sort of crashes forward. And that's similar to what's happening right here in this case. I think the best explanation for the optical domain is that at some point this slope becomes so steep that we get so much strong surface modulation that the red light generated will almost overtake the slightly less red light that's already there, which causes interference that gives us these wiggles right here. But nevertheless, it's kind of interesting that there's almost an analogy between something that happens in everyday life, seeing waterways crash on the shore, and something very exotic that happens inside of an optical fiber like optical wave breaking in this case. Alright, so I hope you found this video interesting. Feel free to check out the source code in the description, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.